course is all about that physical and mental robustness, and that's something that is at the fundamental principles of the new initial naval training course. We're trying to make sure that the ratings are versatile and able to deal with any situation that they might find themselves in subsequently. So we're delivering them a set of generic skills that will be relevant to any operational environment they find themselves in. When a series stand as individuals and as a group, what we want is them to run the scenario. We're only there to give them the outline and it's their exercise to run. It pushes them ever slightly, letting them know that they are capable of more than the fault they were. We've been on here before. This is where we learn all our maritime skills and this is everything getting put in place. So this is not so much the hardest, but it's the most challenging part. Because you've got to remember everything from the past 10 weeks, you've got to recall everything right from the beginning of your training. No, no way if I'd come in here on day one to uh, put, me, put me in DCO. I would just look to be intimidated and not know what to do. It is quite challenging. You do have your moments where you think, you know, what, what am I waking up at quarter to six, four in the morning? But at the same time, when you put your head down, you always realise that you've achieved something in the day. It is an insight of what they're going to be doing in the future. This is the first time in many, many years where, as a phase one recruit, they're going to get insight of the training and the job that they're going to be doing when they get to the fleet. It's the start of their career, and it's good to see that they are infused by what we're delivering here, and that they are prepared for the next stage of their professional training, which comes after this course. Two, six, leave. Your adrenaline's pumping. You, you literally take it like it's a real casualty. You kind of switch off from it's um, an exercise and you actually think there are casualties. You learn from each individual test, but you can't predict that far ahead. You have to, you have to experience it all and make, make the mistakes that come with it. You want to sort of shine and show obviously your full potential, but at the same time you have to stand back and let, <coughs> let somebody else take the limelight and just work as a team. And remember, it's not all about yourself. Yeah. It's your, your team that you're within. Fire, 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 fire into Echo MCO! Shh. There's been a fire reported in the communications room. Fire, 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 fire into MCO! There's a process we use where the recruits actually have a say in their training, and the feedback we're getting from them is helping shape the programme that we are um, putting out. At the moment, this is the sixth class that's come on to Brecon. And now what we want to do, we want to expand it so that on here for two days, not just the one day today. So they spend the night on board so we can build a scenario. Well, that's the mass dump. Give them the information to the bridge so they can get comms with the helo now. Whilst we won't know the true impact that our training has had until they get to the front line, we have a feeling that they are more effective, that they are more resilient, more agile, and actually more prepared for what they will come across in the future. But the real transition from civilian into sailor, it is quite remarkable, and it does make the job an extremely rewarding part, as you do see civilians passing out 10 weeks later as fully signed up members of the Royal Navy, ready for the next stage of their professional development. The fire has been put out and the communications mast has been erected. Okay, this is Chief Ackley speaking, EMT. End of exercise, end of exercise, return and stow all gear.